Hey there, uh, I just wanted to show you the new CSS export or CSS creation from Illustrator CC and kind of show you what it's all about. It, it's, you know, it, my designer hates it. I'm a web developer and <laughs> I get uh, illustrations from my designer a lot. And she's really cynical about it just because, and I understand, uh, the past attempts at creating CSS from Adobe applications. Well, in Illustrator CC, it's taken uh, a bigger leap forward, I guess you can say, in working with CSS. If I go into Illustrator CC and open up the CSS properties panel, crack it open here, this really took me a little while to get used to because it wasn't working the way I would have expected, I guess you could say. Um, first, first and foremost, what I expected was if I come in here and I take my design, let's say you see this, and I want to make a web page and I hear CSS, I'm thinking it's going to make a web page with CSS for me. Well, if I go under file and choose export, you'll see that we have format and we have CSS right there. Now, this is actually just going to create a CSS file. It's kind of interesting. It's also going to create images if necessary. Uh, and, and I'll talk about those in just a little bit here, but but it's going to create a CSS file. It's not going to create an HTML file. So the idea here is that we are, let's say, a designer, you're a print designer, you're a designer, uh, trying to hand over CSS or styling that, that you've created in your design to a developer, or you're trying to take your CSS styling, and instead of trying to guess what, it, what line height you had or, you know, letting, size, etc., to be able to copy-paste or bring it into your editor like Dreamweaver or even Muse, let's say. So that'll allow you to export. But what if I'm doing this? What if I have, let me do this, I've got Dreamweaver open. And I know that you guys, this is the lamest page in the world, but suppose that I've got a little sidebar right here. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to make the sidebar a certain color, et cetera, based on my Illustrator design. Okay, well, if I go back over to Illustrator, you're gonna see I have a little sidebar right here. So if I click on that, if you see, I've got the CSS properties panel open. The CSS properties panel is kind of interesting. It's it's one of those things where I expected this panel to show me, let's say, styling or to apply styling or doing something like that. Well, here's the big thing with working with CSS in Illustrator CC. It's only going to create CSS properties or CSS formatting or styles for named content, typically, unless you turn on this one setting. So if I click on something, like let's say this box, or I go draw a square and I click on it and I look over here and it's like, well, no code was generated. It tells you what to do here. Well, we it's gonna only generate basically uh, what is called named content, CSS for named content. So if you come over here to your layers panel, let me just show you this, and you click on, this is new in CS6, the locate object, I'll click on that. It'll locate the object, there it is right there at the bottom of the panel. If I actually, if I give that a name, it's gonna generate CSS. So if I come here and double click on that, cause we can do this in line for a couple versions and I call it, let's say sidebar, or you can name it if you already have uh, a style set up that's waiting for this formatting in Dreamweaver or other programs, name it the same thing. Hit return, take a look over here. You're gonna see that it's going to automatically create CSS that it can. Now note, note that what I'm saying here, that it's creating the styling that it can do. It can't take everything you do in Illustrator and convert it into CSS, but it's gonna make a style for you. Now what I could do is this, I could come over here and you can actually select part of this, let's say like the filter, copy it. You could also come down here to the bottom and you'll see we've got a little button, whoops, a little button called copy selected style. That'll copy the whole thing for you. I could then go over to Dreamweaver and let's say I've got like CSS. Let me do this real quick. I'm gonna go out and find the sidebar styling. There it is right there. I'll go in and just, let's say, add the styling, whoops, add the styling to it. And you can see it's got its own naming and I'm just pasting, I just pasted it in, okay? There we go. Now if I go take a look at it, you're gonna see that it's got the same basic formatting as my Illustrator file. I know, this is kind of a lame example, I get it, but go back over to Illustrator. So it's gonna create uh, styling or CSS from, un, from named content rather. Now, let's say I click on the white box here. You're gonna see once again, it's not named. I didn't name it over in the layers panel. But suppose that I don't care. I just wanna get the CSS. I don't care what it's named right now. Maybe I'll go name it in Dreamweaver or my other program. Well, I could come over here and you can see right here, export options. 
there's a couple things here we can do. If I click on export options, you're going to see that we've got some settings we can set. And this is how it generates the CSS or what it does when it creates it. So we've got pixels, we've got points. You can change that if you want. You can also tell it not to include certain things. Let's say uh, an opacity value if you don't want to do that. You can include positioning and sizing. So AP, absolute positioning. Even dimensions like width and height if you want to do that. Maybe I'll do that. Down here, you're going to see the include vendor. I'm skipping one thing because that's the main thing we're looking at. Include vendor prefixes. Vendor prefixes are a way to get certain CSS properties like CSS3 properties or newer properties to get it to work in certain browsers. Okay, and some developers don't like them, some do. It kind of depends on the developer. But if you're gonna hand over CSS to a developer, you know, you might as well throw them in there. It's your call, but. And it's also gonna do what's called rasterize unsupported art. I'll talk about that in a minute. If you select generate CSS for unnamed objects, click OK. What it's going to do is as you start to click on things, I start to click on, let's say, the line right here or this box right here or this thing, none of these are named over in the layers panel. So they're unnamed content or unnamed objects. But if I look at my CSS properties panel, you'll see, oh, it's creating an ST, a style zero. So we could go out here and do this. You could, let's say I want to grab styling from a bunch of objects. Well, you can shift click on things to select them. So I'll go out and shift click on a bunch of things out here and I'm missing some things. And you'll see it says, oh, because you have multiple objects selected, you've got to click this generate button down here. So it's just going to say, all right, let's do it. Generate. There's all the styles for all the selected objects. So now I could go out and I could copy this if I want to. You could also export it as a CSS file, just the selected CSS, just the stuff you have here. And that's going to create a CSS file. Now, if you know right here, this is something to really pay attention to. You're going to see some properties are lost. If you click on that thing, it's not going to get you anything. I wish they would give you a listing of properties that are lost or I don't know. Anyway, some of the things that you've got out there will not happen. So, But look, check this out. You're going to see it's pretty cool. It's doing background images. It's got things like uh, you know border radiuses right there. That's the rounding corners, different things like that. It's doing a really good job so, relative to, to some other programs. Now, as far as text is concerned, let's suppose we want to get the CSS from text. Well, I'm going to go to my my uh, my type tool, and I'm going to go select some text. Once you, if you want to try and get do this, if you have Illustrator CC, go select some text, and look what you get: a big fat goose egg. Okay. Here's the thing that that kind of took me by surprise. Well, if you want to get the CSS from the text selected, you select the container that the text is inside of. So. If you go to the selection tool and select the actual container, there you go. Now, if you click on a, let's say, a type area or text area that has a bunch of different kinds of text with different formatting in it, look over here, you're going to see that, oh, it's showing you all the different styling. So it's got normal character style, H1. It's going to show you if you have class styles applied. Or sorry, if you have character styles applied. I said class, whoops. And this is what's really weird. We don't. With this CSS stuff, if you want the the properties to be named a certain thing like H1, you're not going to use a paragraph style. It doesn't recognize paragraph styles, this panel. It only recognizes character styles. So this things to do right here, same with Welcome to Venice, is using an H1 character style. Now what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to go into Window and come to Styles, Character Styles, or Type, there we go. Character Styles, and you'll see, there it is right there. Now, What's interesting about the CSS properties panel is it's going to kind of mirror the character styles panel. It's going to automatically have this normal character style out there because that's the normal style, the, the basic or the default formatting. Any styles that are applied to text will show up in here. So here's what I mean. If I go over to character styles and I create a new one and I call it Brian, take a look over here. You're going to see it's not going to show up. The reason why is because it's only showing what's applied. So if I were to come into my text here and select and apply Brian, you know, clear it, there you'll see it. So it, like I said, giving you a listing of all the styles that are applied. Now if I go select the container, there's all the styling. I could copy that. I could select one line in here and copy that if I want to. I'm triple clicking there to do that, one, two, three. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. What's interesting too is that you can also select text. And let's say I select this text right here. 
you can use this styling or this uh, these styles right here as a way to apply formatting. So if I click on the H1, it'll apply it to the text selected. So it's kind of interesting. Anyway, you'll also notice this right here. This is a graphic style. This is only showing you the graphic styles that are applied out in your page, not all the graphic styles in your graphic styles panel. So this object right here, this thing, this object, I called it a object, sorry. This square or rectangle right here has the black highlight graphic style applied. Now check this out, you guys. Look at this styling I created. It's pretty phenomenal, actually, what it's grabbing. Gradient is creating the gradient in CSS. So, but like I said, you can use this to apply the formatting elsewhere. So I could click on an object and click on the graphic style to apply it. But the style itself, it's not going to be named the graphic style. This is what's weird. It's just formatting that's applied, and it's going to create a generic style called style zero, style one, st1, st2, etc., for the styling. All right, now let's talk about images a little bit. This is probably the coolest thing we've got. If I click on, let's say, um, raster con, or sorry, Illustrator content. Let's say I cr click on a shape that it, it can't create using CSS. Well, what, what Illustrator is going to do, what Illustrator CC is going to do is it's going to take that content and turn it into a, an image, and it's only going to use ping, okay? Ping 8, ping 24, depending on what it is. But it's going to turn it into a background image, which is kind of interesting. So it's assuming that you want to take a div or a box or an object and apply this formatting to it. Now, if you, if you select an object that this is essentially, you guys, this is something that this background image is something that it can't generate CSS for. So it's creating, you're turning into an image. Now, what's awesome about this is I don't have to slice anything. It's just going to grab that object. It's not even going to look at what's behind it. It's just going to grab that object with transparency. If you come down here and you say copy selected style, let's say I do that, and I go over to Dreamweaver, for instance, and I go to my CSS, let me go to my code up here, and I go to the CSS, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to paste that. That's cool. It pastes it, but it will not generate the actual image. It just gives you a reference to it. Kind of weird. If you want the image, and this is something to get used to, what you're going to do is you're going to go out and you're going to export it. So if I choose Export Selected CSS, and let's say I just stick this out here on my desktop, and I say Save or click Save, it's going to do the Export CSS. Generate CSS for unnamed content, add all the stuff. The resolution for the images it's going to work with, it's going to use your document raster effects resolution, which means, you guys, that's under effect up here. You want to use the web, uh, when you set up your document file new, you want to use the web profile, web document profile if you can. Otherwise, if you choose other, you can choose a different resolution. Good luck with that, but anyway. All right, so I'll click OK. It just did it. Now let's go see what it created. Let me show you. I got a bunch of crap on my desktop, sorry. There's the image and there's the CSS. Let me open up the CSS. There it is. You can copy paste that if you want. And there's the actual ping. Let me open this thing up in Photoshop and check this out. Once again, like I said, it's it's basically ping 32. It's creating, there's a drop shadow on it and it's creating this beautiful transparency. If something doesn't have a drop shadow or you know, it's, it's not a, a drop shadow that's really subtle like this, it's probably gonna use like ping eight. Okay, something like that. But it's going to use ping transparency. And look at it knocked out all the stuff in the background. So I can use that somewhere. Another thing too, if you click on, let's say, a series of objects, like I click on this, and then I shift click on a series of things, it's going to tell me, oh, once again, we got to generate the CSS for it. It's going to generate it for me and say, oh, here's all the stuff. Now, what if this? these are three separate objects? What if I want them as one image? Well, if you group things, it's going to create one single image from it if it can't generate CSS. So if I choose, choose object group, I'll group it. Look what it does. Now, if I copy it, I don't get the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it. So I'm going to say export. I'll put it out there on my desktop again. It's going to ask me to replace some stuff and give me my things. And yes, I'm going to click to replace the image. But let's go take a look at the image now. Let me open up Photoshop. There it is. So you can see. Awesome. So it does a really good job of trying to figure out what the image is, cut it and cutting it at its uh, its uh, area where if you were trying to slice this out and you missed part of the drop shadow, you'd be in for a world of hurt. So anyway, I wanted to give you an overview of the CSS styles panel. There's a lot of stuff you guys can do in here. There's more to it than this. The export CSS is a great way to work, but I wanted to give you just 
I guess you could say a brief overview. So there you go.